Network's number one news. Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Holy cow, like that's uh, something else to see. Happy 4th of July. An exciting and successful 4th of July celebration here in New York City. Millions of people taking in the sights and sounds as we celebrate our country's birthday. Good evening, everyone. I'm Joe Torres. And I'm Sandra Bookman. Both sides of the East River crowded with people tonight. And they got to see a fantastic show with New York City as the backdrop. Helping to make all this fun possible, thousands of New York City police officers patrolling the crowds and keeping everyone safe and orderly. Now, Eyewitness News reporter Josh Einiger, well, he got a prime spot for the big show. He is live in the East Village with more. Josh? Sandra Joe, happy 4th to you. You know, this is a very unique uh, New York experience here. The FDR Drive, which was packed with tens of thousands of people in this spot right now, just empty, except for some of their trash. They're going to be coming through and picking up the trash and reopening uh, the road here uh, in the next hour or so after a truly spectacular show. There is no 4th of July like the 4th of July here. All right, what's so cool about it? Uh, when, when it shoots up and then it pops. I'm amazed. Yeah? They're beautiful. A bounty of beauty. 50,000 shells in 22 colors fired off from five barges up and down the East River in the largest display of 4th of July fireworks in this entire country. It's a new experience for me, yeah, since I'm from another country, so it's pretty cool. Great job, NYPD. Nice crowd control we got here. No problem bringing the kid, and we're having a great time. An estimated 3 million people flocked to both shores of the river. They packed onto the FDR Drive, and to get there... Thank you, folks. Please have all bags open and ready for inspection. They had to run a gauntlet of security. Thousands of officers with handheld explosive detectors, bomb-sniffing dogs, and heavy-duty weapons amid increased concerns of a lone wolf attack during this celebration of independence. It's a different world as it relates to terrorism than it was as recently as 18 months ago. But in the end, the only bombs bursting were the ones in the air, a magnificent display for which Tiffany Mincy sat on a bus for seven hours from Rochester to come see. At a time when people have so many differences, tonight, she says, everyone's an American. It's kind of like we all can come together and watch something so spectacular and have fun. Everybody's out here to have fun. So I, I love this. And back live, the Empire State Building in red, white, and blue tonight uh, after this remarkable display of fireworks. And as I said, the FDR Drive should be back open, we are told, within the hour. And with all of the concerns over security today, we can report that the night was truly uneventful, except, of course, for the big show. We're live in the East Village, Josh Einiger, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Josh, it wasn't just there. Thousands of people celebrated Independence Day at Jones Beach as well. Fireworks were launched from a barge offshore. It was the first fireworks show at Jones Beach since 2009 when it was canceled due to budgetary concerns. Crowds tonight were thrilled to see the tradition continue. First time in a long time, and of course, it's beautiful Jones Beach. You have to be here on 4th of July. There's no other place like it. As a kid, you know, watching the fireworks from uh, from the water and just all the people down here, it's a lot of fun. Um, I like the red, blue, white, yellows, greens. Yeah. Happy 4th of July. <laughs> right back at you. WABC <laughs> is a proud sponsor of the Jones Beach Fireworks Show. And hey, check out the fireworks over the Jersey Shore tonight. This one in Asbury Park, thrilling spectators for this 4th of July holiday. Earlier today, dozens of people, more than dozens actually, packed the beaches in the boardwalk at Coney Island. A little rain clouds still didn't keep them away. Tomorrow, however, going to be a different story. Meteorologist Jeff Smith here with details in his exclusive AccuWeather forecast. Jeff? And what a difference a day will make very summer-like tomorrow. It's going to be a beach beauty out there. We have clouds right now south of the city. There have even been a couple of sprinkles over parts of Monmouth County. Those are moving offshore. Of course, we dodged a bullet with all that rainfall uh, earlier today. Many areas only picking up about a trace in and around the city, a little bit more north and west, but overall not too bad of a 4th of July. Temperatures in the low 70s right now in the park, 60s north and west. You fall down to about 64 in the city overnight tonight. Very comfortably cool 50s off to the north. 
Look at the highs during the day tomorrow, though. Up to 85 in the park and right down to the water. Temperatures in the mid-80s down the Jersey Shore at Belmar and Toms River. We're talking low 80s on Long Island. So if you are heading down to the water, which I'm sure many of you are, wind west at 5 to 10 miles per hour. That's an offshore breeze that'll keep it warm right down to the beach. Waves 3 to 4 feet. Water temperatures ranging from 65 on the east end of the island to 70 at the New York City beaches and also down the Jersey Shore. But be careful if you're swimming. The rip current risk is moderate. Also be careful and uh, put on a lot of sunblock. The UV index is 9, which is very high. The rest of your AccuWeather 7-day forecast coming up a little bit later in the half hour. Joe, Sandra, back over to you. All right, Jeff, thank you so much. Police also want to keep everyone safe on the roads this holiday weekend. They are cracking down on drunk drivers. Out on Long Island, police arrested 18 people overnight for DUI or related charges. In Suffolk County, officers checked more than 750 vehicles in just four hours. New York State Police are also operating checkpoints around the state this weekend. And we have a lot more 4th of July coverage at 7 Online, including a slideshow of tonight's fireworks. New at 11, a 22-year-old man from Yonkers has drowned off the coast of New Jersey. Ocean County officials say the victim was swimming with friends near Bayhead when he disappeared this afternoon. The Coast Guard crews and police marine units launched an extensive search. The man was eventually found unresponsive about a half an hour later. He was pronounced dead at the hospital. The victim's name has not been released. Also new tonight, firefighters are putting out hot spots after bringing a two-alarm fire in Brooklyn under control. That fire broke out on the top floor of the three-story residential building in Bushwick about 9 this evening. The flames then spread to a neighboring building. Four people were hurt, one seriously, but none of the injuries are considered life-threatening. So far, no word yet on how the fire started. A developing story this evening out of North Carolina where a deck collapse has left at least 14 people hurt. The deck collapsed at a beach house in the Barrier Island community of Emerald Isle just before 7. The two people had to be airlifted to hospitals with critical injuries. Authorities say family members were posing for a group photo when the deck gave way. The cause isn't immediately known. He is caught on camera sparring with an NYPD officer. Tonight, Saiku George's family speaks out and says it's been tough since that video went viral. Now they want to make sure his side of the story is heard. Eyewitness News reporter Renee Stoll has the story. The Seku George seen today with his mother's head on his shoulder is a different image than what's seen on this cell phone video of him in the red shirt in a confrontation with an undercover police officer Wednesday in Harlem. Police say they spotted George with a knife clipped to his pants. 30-year-old George let his mother and attorney do all the talking at the National Action Network, where they claim the video shows the officer was the aggressor. Uh, thank God that my son is here um, today. That's right. Yes. Because it could have went uh, a different way. George's mother, Tracy Lee, says she's always taught her son to obey the law, which from the cell phone video he seems to be doing when he gives the officer his ID. And he did everything he can to obey the laws. It still turned out it could have been a disaster. The video shows the officer pushing George several times as George attempts to walk away when his ID wasn't returned and the officer took out cuffs. It quickly escalates with the officer swinging and both men eventually fist fighting. What you saw never called for an officer striking and punching and taking such an aggressive stance in these circumstances. In fact, George's attorney is calling for Police Commissioner William Bratton to take a better look at police training. Improve their training, right? Their community relationships, their understanding of things. Renee Stoll, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Police are investigating two deadly shootings in one Long Island community. Detectives in Hempstead are searching for the shooter who opened fire outside a store about 4.30 this morning. A 28-year-old man was shot in the torso. The victim was pronounced dead at the scene. Police have not released his name. Uh, police in Hempstead also searching for a gunman who shot a man inside his car. Investigators say the victim drove about a half mile after being shot in the head and crashed into a house on Rose Avenue. He died at the hospital a short time later. No one inside the home was hurt. Police have not determined a motive in that shooting.
Overseas now, tomorrow, people in Greece will vote on whether to accept a bailout referendum. Long lines formed outside bank ATMs as Greeks try to withdraw money ahead of the vote. The latest polls show Greeks are evenly split over whether to vote yes or vote no. I can confidently say that I'm voting yes because I believe that our future and even my kids' future in 20 or 30 years from now is in the Eurozone and in the European Union. A no vote could put the current government in a stronger position to negotiate a bailout, while a yes vote could mean a caretaker government would take over in order to deal with the country's 320 billion euro debt. Suffolk County now has seen two positive tests for West Nile virus. Today, health, official, uh, health officials announced that a positive sample was collected June 23rd in Selden. Now, the first positive sample was collected June 18th in South Huntington. Earlier this week, the New York City Health Department said the West Nile virus had been detected in mosquitoes collected in Queens and Staten Island. So far, no human cases have been reported this season. Former lifeguards become life savers. Coming up on Eyewitness News, police officers on Long Island jump into action to save swimmers in distress. Tale of a castaway stranded in his sailboat. No fuel, no way to communicate how the sailor was saved. And the Avengers. Team USA just hours away from a soccer battle against Japan in the World Cup Finals. And they have a score to settle. Some things are not what they appear to be. Other things are exactly what they appear to be. The Lexus IS. As aggressive as it looks. Take advantage of special July 4th offers now through the 6th on the all-wheel drive 2015 IS 250. See your Lexus dealer. And, and we're bringing our head-banging, breathtaking, side-splitting show back to Broadway. No jazz hands, we promise. Penn and Teller on Broadway for six weeks only. No extensions, no kick. Visit Ticketmaster.com. Ram has the best towing, the best torque, the best payload, or the best fuel economy. Baby, let's ride. So your summer can be one wild ride. Get a great deal during the Ram 4th of July sales event. With 1,000 4th of July bonus cash, get 72.50 total values on the 2015 Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cab. Cheap furniture is just cheap. But then I went to Bassett. It's better made, better looking, and all at prices that I love. Save 25% store-wide during Bassett's 4th of July sale. Bassett is just better. Hurry into the Hyundai 4th of July sales event and take advantage of this summer's hottest deals on Hyundai's hottest vehicles, like the five-star overall safety rated Elantra. Yours for only $129 a month plus $500 off in summer sales cash. Or get up to $32.50 in total savings. Or drive home in one of 2015's 10 most fuel-efficient cars under $25,000, the Sonata Hybrid, and get up to $5,000 in total savings. But these deals won't last forever, so hurry into your local Hyundai dealer today. The Hyundai 4th of July sales event ends July 6th. Feel like a kid again with Dunkin's new Oreo and Chips Ahoy flavored culotta and iced coffees. Classic cookie flavor in every sip. America runs on Dunkin'. Monday at 5, Eyewitness News unveils the future of apartment hunting. Who would have ever thought you'd be buying real estate like this? Check out dozens of places in minutes. It's just so real. The fun, fast way to your next dream home. I'll take you on that virtual reality tour. Monday at 5 on Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Two men were rescued after getting into trouble swimming off Long Island this morning. Long Beach police say the men got stuck against the rocks of a jetty about 6 a.m. The responding officers, both former lifeguards, were able to pull the men from the water. They had some cuts and bruises and were taken to the hospital to be checked out. We stay on the water. Two boaters on their way to the Bahamas were rescued from their disabled boat by the U.S. Coast Guard today. A cruise ship spotted them yesterday and contacted the guard. A guard cutter towed the boat back to Florida. They didn't have a radio to call for help and had been adrift for nearly a week. One of the boaters was severely sunburned and needed treatment at a hospital.
Police in California have arrested a man accused of causing a Greyhound bus crash that injured several people. A highway patrol officer say a passenger grabbed the steering wheel and threatened to kill everyone on board. That bus veered off the road and into a ditch in San Bernardino. The suspect ran away, was later arrested at a nearby Olive Garden restaurant. Five people were taken to the hospital. They had non-life-threatening injuries. Fans of the British royal family are gathering in the English countryside hoping for a glimpse of the new princess on her first official engagement. Tomorrow, the two-month-old daughter of Prince William and Kate will be christened Princess Charlotte of Cambridge. The ceremony will take place in the same church where Princess Diana was baptized in 1961. A surprise wedding today for New York's own Billy Joel. The singer married Alexis Roderick today at his estate on Long Island. The wedding, a surprise for guests who thought they were there for a 4th of July party. Presiding over the ceremony, Joel's longtime friend, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. Joel and Roderick have been together since 2009. They are expecting their first child together later this summer. A fireworks fiasco. <laughs> The holiday show goes haywire near the finale. Shells land in the crowd and injure spectators. We'll show you what went wrong. Chestnut cracked. The reigning king dethroned by an underdog. How a new speed eater was crowned the new champ of chomp. Plus some great weather to round out the holiday weekend. Meteorologist Jeff Smith has the exclusive AccuWeather forecast when we come back. Close captioning is sponsored by Raymore and Flanagan. For the closest location, please visit RaymoreFlanagan.com. Right as millions travel America on high alert, what's being done to protect against terror this holiday weekend? Plus, the 2016 race. Who's up? Who's down? It's getting very interesting out there and very surprising. Now, Sunday, Rick Perry speaks out on ABC's This Week with George. Thanks for coming to movie night. Yeah, of course. So fun. So fun, right? Yeah. I'm going to go check. Okay. Well, we're all the way up to 4%. It's great. Yeah. I could do this all night. I'm just, I'm just going to go check again. Leave slow downloads behind. 100% fiber optics is here. Get out of the past. Get Fios. Now $79.99 a month. Go online or call now. Rashida? Leave early. Go roam. Sleep in. Sleep out. Stargaze. Dream big. Wander more. Care less. Beat sunrise. Chase sunset. Do it all on us. Get your first month's payment plus five years wear and tear coverage. Make the most of summer with Volvo. This summer, make the most of the season with Jeep Cherokee's legendary off-road capability. The 2015 four-wheeler of the year gets up to 31 MPG highway. So you can cherish every sunrise and chase every sunset. Your endless summer starts at the Jeep 4th of July sales event. With $500 4th of July bonus cash, get 2,000 total cash allowance on the 2015 Jeep Cherokee Latitude. Six Flags introduces another first. Batman the Ride, now backwards. That's right, backwards. Fly through loops and corkscrews, but you'll never see them coming. Go for the new El Diablo coaster. Go higher on King Guitar and Zoom and Jar. And go faster on El Toro. Save up to 26 bucks with any can of Coke. Or buy a day, get the summer free with a thrill pass. Go big. Go Six Flags Great Adventure. Eyewitness News needs your help to protect our children. Have you seen Taylor? ABC7 and your Tri-State Board leaders thank you for helping protect our children. You may want to set aside your late night snack. The crowds, the cameras, the big eaters. Nathan's Famous hosted its annual hot dog eating contest on Coney Island. Did they ever? <laughs> 2014 runner-up Matt Stoney took the mustard belt from reigning champion Joey Chestnut. He inhaled, ready for this, 62 dogs and buns in a mere 10 minutes. The victory denied Chestnut a ninth straight title. 
On the women's side, Miki Sudo captured the championship for the second year in a row, downing 38 hot dogs in 10 minutes. Both men's and women's winners take home $10,000 in prize money, along with those championship belts. Those and mustard a, yellow championship belts. And a visit with, the, with their gastroenterologist. Yeah. <laughs> Both of them weigh about 62 pounds. Yeah, that's I mean, what's they, amazing they, They're so me. skinny. Oh, it's incredible. It makes my stomach it's all hurt hot even dog. thinking about it. All hot dog. <laughs> that's a sight to see. I wish I could say that about my goat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so tomorrow's going to be a much better beach day around here than today was. Oh, it's going to be an exceptional beach day tomorrow. Right. As a matter of fact, you're going to want to put on a lot of sunblock because the sun's going to be out all day. The UV index is up around a 9. We get temperatures in the mid-80s. It is going to be just beautiful out there. Here's a live look right now. It's been a competition between the fireworks and the lights on the Empire State Building, which have been just as spectacular overnight tonight on this July 4th. 72 degrees, that wind coming in calm right now. The high got up to 75 after a morning low of 70. The high, of course, limited by the cloud cover that we had during much of the day and a little bit of rain at times. 84 is your typical high for Independence Day. The warmest July 4th on record in New York City, 102 back in 1949. More recently, we got down to 55 degrees back in 1986. Sun setting at 831. Only a trace of rainfall in Central Park. But there was a little bit more measurable rainfall north and west of the city. 0.13 at Sussex, 0.08 at Poughkeepsie. Still even there, not a big deal as that rain moved on by around midday into the early afternoon hours. So summer really returns tomorrow with sun and temperatures well into the 80s, right down to the beaches as well. More humid on Monday, perhaps a late day thunderstorm spotty at best, uh, north and west of the city mainly. A better shot at storms for Tuesday and especially during the day on Wednesday as a more vigorous system approaches from the Great Lakes at that time. 72 again in the park here, 70 down the shore at Belmar and Toms River, mid 60s on the island, low 60s north and west of the city where you will get down to the 50s overnight tonight. Dew points are pleasant right now in the mid 50s, but they'll be ticking up toward the uncomfortable and even oppressive category as we head towards, say, tomorrow night and into Monday and especially Tuesday and Wednesday. The radar satellite showing just a few clouds off to the south of New York City. There could be a renegade sprinkle moving over parts of, uh, say, Monmouth County. That's about it. But this is our weather for tomorrow. A lot of clear skies over the Great Lakes with high pressure, and that's why we're calling it a beach beauty. The high getting up to around 85. Heading into Monday, similar temperatures, more humidity, though. And again, there could be a stray storm, especially west of the city. By late in the day. Accurate weather forecast overnight, gradual clearing, areas of fog late. I forgot to mention that, mainly outside of the city. The uh, low getting down to about 64. We're 67 at 7 o'clock in the morning, back up to 85 tomorrow afternoon, mainly sunny and warmer out there. Heading into tomorrow night, it does become a little bit more humid. The low getting down to 70, could be some low clouds and fog late. Sun and clouds on Monday, 85, maybe a stray late day storm, not even enough to post it on the seven day. Better chance though on Tuesday and especially Wednesday, middle and upper 80s. And then we round out the week with low and mid 80s on Thursday and Friday. You notice overnight lows don't go below 70. Mm. Yeah. So you can say goodbye to comfortable sleeping weather yeah, for a, a while. Summer it's summer week of weather. It's summer. Right. Yes. Thanks, Jeff. A sports spectacular next with Laura Benke. Speaking of summer, it's the boys of summer. The Yankees with a flair for the dramatic this weekend. Just winning, that's not enough. No, instead, they like to make things interesting. This afternoon, the pinstripes going from being on the verge of a win to a potential loss to that celebration against the Rays. And the Mets turning to their ace to help give their struggling offense a chance tonight. The Dodgers, though, with other plans. Sports is next. How do we make Carvel Sundays even more delicious? We make one free. <laughs> Every Wednesday by one classic Sunday, get another free. America's precious ice cream, only at Carvel.
in to the Hyundai 4th of July sales event for this summer's hottest deals on Hyundai's hottest vehicles. Like U.S. News and World Report's best midsize car for the money, the totally redesigned 2015 Sonata. Yours for just $139 a month. Or make waves in the Santa Fe Sport, named at KBB.com 10 Best SUV for under $25,000. For only $199 a month, plus an additional $500 off in summer sales cash. But these deals won't last forever, so visit the Hyundai 4th of July sales event today and save on every model on the lot. This event ends July 6th. Parents from the Bronx to Buffalo had a cause, and they had a voice. They just needed some champions. Governor Cuomo and legislative leaders passed a bold education reform package that invests in all our public schools, expands parent choice, and ensures public charter schools can thrive and grow. They increased funding for New York State schools and gave all of our children the stability they deserve. Now the picture is a whole lot brighter for kids and parents. make Carvel Sundays even more delicious. We make one free. <laughs> Every Wednesday by one classic Sunday, get another free. America's precious ice cream, only at Carvel. I'm Bill Ritter. Chris Christie uses his experience as governor to run for president, but what has he really accomplished? Former Governor Richard Cody and a top Republican are up close Sunday morning at 11. Edge of your seat, 4th of July excitement in the Bronx. Here's Laura. Does it get any better than that? This season, the American League East just has the feel of a division race that's going to go down to the final week, maybe even the final game of the season. That means every division matchup really counts today. The Yanks trying to take their second in a row from the Rays out at the stadium first inning. Yankees getting on the board. Alex Rodriguez doing the work. The single brings in Brett Gardner. They would lead 2-0 after one. Michael Pineda getting the job done on the mound. He struck out 10, allowed only five hits in seven shutout innings. So in the top of the ninth, it was Dylan Batanzas going for the save. Instead, though, Steven Souza Jr. doing that two-run home run. It's a tie game. Bottom of the frame, the Yankees getting a little help from the Rays. Brad Boxberger, a bad time for a really bad throw. Jose Perella scoring all the way from second. That's it. That's your ball game. Three to two. The Yanks with their second straight walk-off win. And the Mets may have taken game one of their weekend series against the Dodgers last night, but offense, it's still a problem. New York had scored just two runs in their last four games heading into tonight as Matt Harvey took them out looking for an ace-like performance in L.A. Not exactly how it went down in the fifth. Already one nothing Dodgers. That's Adrian Gonzalez. Doubles that lead. Solo jack off Harvey. It's 2 nothing. Still in the fifth, Alberto Colasco, the RBI single. Harvey lasted just five innings, allowed three runs. He also walked five. The Mets would try to mount a comeback, eighth inning. Lucas Duda, just a few feet shy of a three-run homer. Instead, it's an RBI double. They would get it to 4-3 in the ninth. One on for Curtis Granderson, but he strikes out to end the ball game. The Mets score three runs for just the second time in 12 games, and they still fall. 4-3. Well, it is a familiar final at the Women's World Cup where tomorrow the United States will face Japan for the title for the second World Cup in a row. However, back in 2011, the United States women's national team fell to Japan in a penalty shootout. So the Americans would prefer to change the ending this time around. The U.S. hasn't won since 1999, but seems to be riding a wave of momentum into this match. We've prepared our whole life to play in a World Cup final, um, so we're extremely excited and I think what's so special about this team is that we've trusted each other. It's not about what's happened before. For me, it's, it's the opportunity to have this amazing group of women. While today up in Canada, England and Germany battling it out for third place. And it was not a good ending for FIFA's top-ranked team. First, Germany lost to the U.S. in the semis. Then today, to England in extra time, Farrah Williams, the penalty kick in the 108th minute, 1-0. England beats Germany for the first time ever finishing in third place in the Women's World Cup. Well, it appeared the Red Bulls were back on a roll after a bit of a slump. New York brought a two-game league win streak into today, along with four wins in their last five matches overall tonight. Visiting the crew out in Columbus, all tied up in the 73rd minute. A nice sequence here, though, for the crew. Ends with Ethan Finley's second goal of the match. Two to one. 
The Red Bulls fall on their road, ending their two-game win streak in Major League Soccer. And a busy night for New York soccer continuing. NYCFC in Montreal tonight, just five minutes after the impact tied the game. NYCFC with an answer. 82nd minute, David Villa, the free kick. Find in the corner. Visitors take the lead. They hold on. Two to one. New York City Football Club getting the win. And we have much more ahead in sports. When we return, more moves in the NBA. And tonight, the Knicks, again, joining in on the fun. And while it's a big man heading to the Big Apple, it's not exactly a big name. We got the latest. Plus, are you ready for some NBA basketball <laughs> summer league style? The Nets are. Doesn't that look like fun? Highlights from their first game. Next. Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com says the Kia Optima looks even better than some sedans costing twice as much. And for $149.